Hey everybody, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. Uh, today, I'm going to do something a little out of the norm that I've kind of hinted at in the past. I'm going to cover my do-it-yourself solar generator, which somebody's going to come along and say, But you it can't be a solar generator if it doesn't generate power. Well, mine includes the cost of a panel, so it does generate power. Um, I've been a little hesitant to do it because mainly because the batteries... I don't know if you guys will be able to replicate the deal that I got on the batteries and I try to avoid, you know, stuff that's unattainable for, for the average guy. But what I used were these ICC Nexergy LifePo lithium iron phosphate batteries. And I was able to get them on eBay for like $58 a piece. And then shipping was pretty expensive. It was 30 bucks, so it was going to be $60 total. But I contacted them. I said, hey, I want to buy two. Can you give me a break on shipping? And they refunded me $20. So I was able to get two for $150. And right now on eBay, they're like, I think they're a hundred bucks a piece. Let me look. Yeah, they're up to like a hundred bucks now. There's some other batteries called Valence that are the same thing. And see, these have shot up too. When I first started researching this, and look at this, you, you could get Valence batteries for like, I don't know, 70 or 80 bucks a piece. And, and they're the same basic thing, 40 amp hour, 12.8 volts. The ICC Nexergy are 38 amp hours. I'm willing to bet that they're the same damn battery in a different case. But the benefit of this is that it has balancing and everything built into it. So, and I wanted to do lithium iron phosphate batteries because they last for way more charge cycles. And it's like 10 times the amount of charge cycles, but also because they're so much lighter. These batteries are 10 pounds a piece. So I have 20 pounds of batteries in my little box and an 80 amp hour lith or seal lead acid, sorry, an 80 amp hour lead acid battery weighs a little over 50 pounds. So like two and a half times as much weight. And I have a little box that I can pick up and move around pretty easily. My wife can pick it up and move it around pretty easily. And that was basically the goal. I, I was shooting for the Yeti 1000 is, is what I want, you know, was my benchmark. So I don't know, shop around. Hopefully you can find the same kind of deal. I got mine from a place called Greenway Computers. As you can see here, um, you can see the price I paid for them too. They might have some more. I don't know. Like I said, I, I, I was hesitant to do the video for that reason because the cost might not be realistic for everybody else. But that is what I got. I have two of those. They are ran in what's called parallel so that my voltage stays the same. But my amp hours double. So instead of 40 amp hours, I have 80 or 38.4. I have 76.8. Um, that was the first component that I got. The next thing that I got was this ED Koa, whatever, 1500 watt inverter. Um, I don't know where it's at here. Oh, yeah. I buy a lot of crap on eBay. So it's 1500 watt, uh, continuous 3000 watt peak, pure sine wave. It's got this little remote control so you can uh, turn it on and off from wherever you're at. Um, I don't really have any complaints. It doesn't have the best reviews, but I don't have any complaints with mine. It lasted through my camping trip fine. I've dropped it like three times. I really need to mount it to a board or something, but I haven't and uh, probably won't until it breaks and then I'll mount the replacement to a board. But this thing will run my whole camper. It runs, I mean, runs the whole camper while my wife's washing dishes. I'm playing Xbox. Uh, it'll run the furnace in there. It, it does everything we need it to do without a problem. So I don't have a complaint with that. That was another $168. Now, the fact that I use these lithium iron phosphate batteries, 
made me have to buy a much more expensive solar charge controller. Um, I'm going to do another solar thing that's not going to be portable for my wife's little workshop. And that'll be more basic because it doesn't need to be portable. It can just sit in there. And she can, she'll be able to use a much cheaper charge controller because she'll be able to use just normal lead acid like golf cart batteries. But anyway, the, the lithium iron phosphate, you can technically charge them like on a lead acid profile, but it kind of shortens their life. So I just spent the extra money and got the Solar Epic MPPT controller. Whoops, sorry about that. Um, this is $160 on Amazon, and I got it for the reason that I could control it. I could program it specifically for the lithium iron phosphate batteries. Um, here we go. This is it right here. I got the uh, 30 amp one. The MPPT, I was getting like 80 watts out of my 100 watt panel. So that's what the MPPT does is it gets you, you know, high, high efficiency. Your efficiency with a normal charge controller will only be like 60, 70% where you're losing like 30, 40% of your power that's hitting your uh, solar panel. I know all this stuff's confusing. That's why I'm trying to go through it. And uh, that's what the MPPT means though. I mean, it stands for like multi-phase point tracking or something like that. But really what it means is you're just going to get more efficiency out of it. So, but the main reason that I went with it, I really don't care about the efficiency because it's free power, right? But I needed to be able to program it for the uh, lithium iron phosphate. So, with that particular charge control, you see there's no screen on it, right? There's nothing. You can't do anything with it unless you buy this little remote meter. So, I got this deal, too, for 27 bucks, And this is what you see me looking at in my uh, videos. So in the little picture here, they got 35.5 volts hitting the panel. It's producing 1.6 amps. And then the charge controller is converting that into 14.7 volts, 3.9 amps in the battery. And from here, you can go through the settings and stuff like that, program it the way you want it. And you can mount it remotely. Um, you may or may not need this if you go with it. If you go with the cheaper charge controller, you can just do it on the screen, but if you're just duplicating this build, then you're going to need that. So that's another $26.90. Uh, next up, sorry, I'm going to try to do this without shooting through. These Bouge RV 10 foot, 10 gauge MC4 connectors. Uh, MC4 is a connector type that's on my solar panel. So these plug into it and then the other end's bare. You just plug it into the charge controller and run a screw down on the wire. It was 20 bucks for these. They're 10 foot. It was long enough to reach from the hood of my truck back to the bed under the camper where I was keeping the box. Um, they plug right in. It's pretty self-explanatory. Right on the charge controller, it'll say like, it has a little picture of a solar panel and it says plus and minus on it. So if you're considering a solar generator i think you can probably handle that next up was the uh solar panel and i went with literally the cheapest one on amazon the new power that's what it says that's how it's spelled 100 watt solar panel it was 79.90 so like 40 bucks cheaper than the Renogy ones. It, it, it looks pretty damn identical to you. Like I said, I was getting 80, 85 watts through the charge controller out of this thing. So it was fine. Realistically, I'd like to have a second panel, a second 100 watt panel to charge up a little faster because it does take a full day to charge. If I have multiple days without sunshine, it'd probably slowly die. Um, but it wasn't an issue on our last trip. The next, the rest of the stuff I bought was like just 
wire and connectors and stuff like that, but I'm going to count it because you have to buy it. Some people like to play the game of, oh, well, you would have had to buy that no matter what. And like, let's just do a real cost breakdown here. So the cell term 10 pack for AWG connectors. I got these here. They were $10.19. And they fit this wire. This is like amp wire to run an amp in a stereo system. And it came with a fuse too. Which my setup is not fused or circuit breakered, and it really should be. Um, but it's not, so whatever. You should put a circuit breaker on yours or not. Your life, your choice. Uh, the wire was another 30 bucks. And the last thing I had to buy was a crimper because I'm not an electrician and I did not have a hammer crimper. Um, so I bought that and it makes really, really nice crimps. I don't have to, I'm trying to pull this up here. If I can find it, all the crap my wife's bought. There it is. Basically you stick your uh, lug in there like that. You beat the hell out of it with a mini sledge and it makes a pretty damn tight crimp. Um, this thing's pretty nice. I wouldn't want to try it with players. I considered just throwing some solder in there and, and hitting it with the torch, but I think the crimps I made are probably pretty secure. So that's everything that I bought. That comes to a total of $664.15, which is more than I thought it was, but that's what it was. Um, for that, I got 78.4 amp hours of total capacity which works out to 0.975 kilowatts of power. So it compares pretty favorably to the Goal Zero Yeti. Um, I can handle 500 watts of solar input at 12 volts. I can put out 1500 watts continuous and 3000 watts peak. Like I said, I didn't have a problem kicking on anything. Even the air conditioner and the camper, the inverter would run. Um, this system has room to grow for sure. I don't foresee any real problems with it unless the batteries take a poop, but I actually bought four of them. I just only used two in the system. Um, so I have two more out there in the garage if they do. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, compared to like the Gold Zero Yeti, they're 1,045 watts, so they have like 50 more watts than me. They do have USB outs on that. I don't have USB outs on mine just yet. I bought a thing. I haven't really determined what kind of box I want to put it in just yet. Um, I do not have a way to charge it from AC, which they do. So that's kind of nice. I could add that. It'd be because of the lithium iron phosphate batteries, it would be more expensive. Uh, the cheapest charger that I found, AC charger for lithium iron phosphate, is about 180 bucks or 160 bucks. Um, I don't have to use any specific panels like Energy and Kodiak requires you to do. I did get to build it myself and show the world how clever I am, so I feel pretty good about that. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the whole video. Um, like I said, you, you, there, it's just like doing anything else in life, right? There's a thousand ways to skin a cat, and 995 of them work. So this is how I did mine, and it's working for me. I'm sure you can adapt it as you need, as you see fit. Or you can just go buy one of the pre-built ones if building stuff isn't for you. Um, I will definitely do some different stuff next time. Like I said, my wife's... I'm just going to use golf cart batteries and I'm going to use a cheaper charge controller and I'm going to let it sit in the same spot. But this one for camping is pretty nice. If you really just want power, you'll get way more power way easier for way less money if you just go buy a generator, a gas generator. Um, the motivation for this was really that I don't want to listen to a generator run while I'm out there camping in the middle of nowhere. I want to listen to the waves crash on the beach or the crickets chirp or whatever um and then you know if zombies come i can still make power but i'm not that worried about that really 
I, I just really don't want to listen to a generator. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check us out on Facebook at The Driveway Engineer. And uh, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment below if you have any questions. Or if you have any advice, I'm, I'm no expert on the subject at all. This is just what I did and it works for me. So I'd love to hear what kind of stuff you guys are doing. There are other more in-depth stuff, and I'll probably start to cover that as I get more into it. You know, building your own battery packs and things of that nature. Um, this was just the easiest thing for me to get into to get started originally. And I think it's a thing most people can replicate, except the cost of your batteries is going to be a little bit higher, unfortunately. You're probably going to have to add 50 bucks um, or more once this video goes live and people start catching on. But I'm not that popular, so if you if you buy your batteries and then share the video, maybe you can get a deal. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time on the Driveway Engineer. I'm JR. See ya.